comes again. Yes, I did, and I declared it the worst Monty car I'd ever driven. Actually, the worst car I've ever driven. I remember ringing Rover up once when it came out and saying, could I borrow one to test? And they said, yes, just don't put anyone you love in it. They were that bad. They were not safe, and they were not good. James, you sourced the cars for this tour. Yes, I did. How many of these were left in the UK when you went to find them? Uh, there were 18. Just 18. There were only 18 City Rovers in Britain. And how many did you buy from the tour? Uh, 18. How many shows are we doing? 18. Right, so by the end of this tour, there will be no City Rovers left alive in the UK. It's a service we provide for you. Let's let we do this on your behalf. It's pest control. Now, something occurs to me. What do you think is the biggest problem with the Olympic sport of hurdling? Good question. Yeah. Is it that the hurdles don't rush to the athletes at high speed. Bang on. Now that is like remarkable because I was in the pub with an Olympic hurdlist only the other day and he said he quite liked the hurdles but he wished they rushed towards them at high speed. So it's obviously a big problem is what we're saying. Yeah. And to address that problem we're going to see if we can actually do hurdling where the hurdles move about. Uh, obviously to do that we need an athlete. So would you please give a warm welcome to Paul Joseph. We can tell he's an athlete because he's running. That's something a normal person wouldn't do unless they were being chased by a bear. Uh, right, so he's down there, and we must now bring out the Top Gear hurdles. <laughs> As you can see, there go folks. You could probably jump over one of those if it were standing still. But could you jump over one if it were rushing towards you? Well, that is what we're here to find out. So, Paul, are you ready? Yes, and are you guys ready? You're not wearing full face helmets. That's quite brave. Mistake. Because here we go in three, two, one, begin! Here he goes, Paul now lining up. Here he goes. He's going to jump over and not kick him in the face. Don't kick him in the face. No, nope, he's cleared the second and the third! Yes! yes! That's pretty good. That sounds better. Sport, it's, it? it's better than normal hurdling. Anyway, so the thing is that uh, Richard, James, and I were out last night. We were thinking that's quite good jumping over a moving go kart. But what if the go kart were a bit bigger? That's what we thought. Sorry about this, Paul. It's just an idea we've had. <laughs> Earlier on, you saw Limbo. Now it's time to bring out the Lambo. This is a Murcielago, famous for being one of the shortest cars ever made. Not the shortest, it's not word, is it? Longest. Longest, that's right. It has the chassis from a motorhome. And we were wondering, could Paul jump over that? Who'd like to see him drive? Yeah. Well now, come on. Who wants to see him jump over the Lamborghini? Who wants to see him? Look at it this way, either you're going to witness the birth of a new Olympic sport or you're going to see a man being run over by a Lambo. Either way, it's a moment you can take home and treasure. Um, are you ready, Paul? Well, he says he is. I mean, he's only doing it because he's contractually obliged to do it. He has no choice. Okay. He has no choice. Um, yes, exactly. Under law, he signed the thing saying he'd do what we told him to. So here we go. Get your cameras ready by all means. Um, this could be a YouTube hit. Who knows? He does want quiet, though. I so here we go. In three, two, one, begin. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! Well done, Paul. What a stupid good to watch. It was good to watch. He was successful, and that is a bombshell on which we can end. Thank, thank you.